And, you know, you also have the almost, um, in hindsight, poorly, uh, poorly chosen uh, mantra of progress, which mm -hmm. is... Yeah, so how does the full thing go? Well, because he, he basically revs him up by saying, you're like, do, uh, drink what you want, shout what you want, but please be respectful of the people around you. And as always a progress, there is one rule, and that one rule is this, and everyone will try and don't be a dick. Right. And as we'll kind of move on to now, the, a lot of their mantras they didn't fully live up to. So uh, should we go into the speaking out bit now? Oh, we shall. We shall. So again, like like we kind of said at the start of the Jimmy thing, obviously we're going to be kind of touching on a lot of heavy subject matter here as best we can. So we're not here to upset or like upset anyone. If if you want to skip forward, please feel free to do so. So yeah, as 2020 dawned, progress would see some very troubled times ahead. Uh Jim Smallman would step down from the company after chapter 100, which was right in the last month of 2019, uh, and he would be replaced by commentator and close friend Matthew Richards. By this point, Progress had already established their working relationship with WWE, and when they launched NXT UK, both Jim Smallman and Glenn Joseph from Progress had been hired to be writers for the show. As such, Jim wanted to leave Progress to solely focus on the NXT UK role. Um, it seemed Progress was going to be heading into a new era, and the first few chapters following Smallman's departure showed it was in safe hands, so this was the show where Cara Noir would win the belt and establish himself as like they're one of their top stars however as we all know the coronavirus rocked the world and everything would have to be forced and shut down and everything went into lockdown so questions already been thrown up about what the shape the wrestling industry would be in following the virus but then that was added to when in june 2020 the world would be rocked by some truly shocking reveals many wrestlers talent staff and fans took Twitter to reveal allegations of, se of sexual harassment and abuse in the scene which would become known as the speaking out movement Scenes across the world would see many big names brought to the front in these allegations, with the UK scene in particular having a lot of the bulk of those names brought forward. So this included some top stars in progress, such as David Starr, El Leggero, and Travis Banks, with these wrestlers being permanently banned from the promotion and even having some of their content removed from its demand service. Then tag team champions Scotty Davis and Jordan Devlin were also stripped of the belts and suspended from the company. And as we alluded to, Jimmy Havoc, who at this point was part of AEW, also had some pretty serious allegations leveled against him, and that resulted in him being let go from that company. Um, however, it was not just talent that came under fire as the management of progress came under the spotlight as well. A fan revealed on Twitter that following a show, he encountered Jimmy Havoc at the World's End Bar in Camden, a regular spot for wrestlers and fans to go to after the event. When the fan approached Jimmy to give him congratulations on a great match that night, Jimmy responded by punching that fan in the face. When the fan brought this up to management, he was sent an email saying that the company was not responsible for the talent once they left the premises, as they are not under contracts by them. They also tried to pass off Jimmy's actions Actions as him still being in character. The fans' tweet on the whole of the whole event uh, was retweeted by obviously many people, many wrestlers, including Pete Dunne, who found the whole situation to be handled by Progress is absolutely shocking. I'm going to link that uh, an article which has the email and things in if you want to go ahead and read it. Um, management, of course, tried to reach out to the fan with Glenn Joseph responding to his tweet, asking if they could talk privately. However, this caught the attention of wrestler Dan Maloney, who at that point was already sounding off on a lot of people in regards to these allegations. Like He was ramped up on Twitter, and he leveled some pretty serious allegations against Glenn Joseph as well in regards to his conduct towards female workers. Uh, those tweets have since been deleted, um, and that would eventually lead to Glenn stepping down from progress, as I'll get into in a moment, as well as NXT U care but before we get to that what are your kind of thoughts on the way progress handled that particular situation they are hr they are the mm -hmm. boss anything that happens in their promotion they are somewhat liable to yeah. you know it's not enough to just be like what well, happened outside so it doesn't mm -hmm. count well tell you what i do i've got the email do you want me to read their response out sure to see you've got the full scope of it. So yeah. I'll read his first. So he put he sent to them in an email, which you can see the copies of on his tweet. Hey guys, brilliant show yesterday. My first one and fairly enjoyed it. Went to the world's end afterwards. Great to see all the guys from the show there later as well. However, I saw Jimmy Havoc at the bar, simply said great match to him, and he punched me in the face. As you might have seen, 
I've asked Havoc why he did this last night on Twitter today, and he can't remember the incident. I've called the pub, and they do have CCTV. I'm in two minds whether or not to report to the police. To be honest, I'm not happy with the incident and don't want the headache of going to the Met. I just wanted to make you guys aware of the incident, really put a downer on what was a top show and after beers. Then they responded with, hey... Uh, thanks for the email, and I'm glad you enjoyed the show. While I can fully see that being punched in the face by anyone isn't a pleasant experience, as I'm sure you can appreciate once the event is over, Progress is not responsible for the actions of anyone associated with the company as a performer or support crew. Talent are not contracted to us in that way. They are independent wrestlers. From your description, it sounds as if Jimmy was trying to protect his character, but had had a bit too much to drink. That's not an excuse, merely an observation of how it looks from here. If you want to report it, you're entirely at liberty to do so. I will be calling Jimmy Havoc this evening to find out what happened and where appropriate we will take necessary disciplinary steps. It's very mixed bag. I mean, they clearly didn't do enough. Like they were, it, it, it felt like they were more trying to just brush it off as not their problem rather than trying to work with the fan for a solution, which is what they should have done. Yeah. I mean, a simple, a, a better, um, thing would just be say you will investigate and then to actually investigate would be ideal they I should mean, look they should they should seek the cctv themselves and then talk to their their own wrestler the the the, the completely played out and bullshit they're independent contractors yeah um, if i was complete if shit. i was yeah it's bullshit like he's he was with them for how many years at that point well, I, I think it's not that it, clearly he's never he wasn't officially signed to them because that's the thing they they never had people who were just exclusively to them because again it's an independent company. My standpoint on it is that they were all clearly good friends with Jimmy, and that the fact of the matter is even if he's your friend and you you want to protect him, you could have at least said to the fan, "We will speak to Jimmy," and like at least try and get him to apologize, even if he's claiming he doesn't remember the incident, is at least like a step in the right direction, in my opinion. And it's the fact like you can't you can't just say it, the fact like just because he's not contracted to us, we can't do anything. Like you can. He's still talent that works for you, and it's still happened in your back garden. You can't just let them get away with doing things like that to a fan. Right. Well, you're still you're still platforming someone that potentially has allegedly at that point done that. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah, there's there's more that they should have done, especially in that moment and in many of the other moments that came out. Mm -hmm. Um I I don't know. It's it's difficult to believe that they were oblivious to everything that was going on because there was a lot, you know. It was a large chunk of your roster mm -hmm. that were that had allegations placed against them. Um I don't know. It's it's a very difficult situation and yeah. They've seemingly come back and I mean a lot of the wrestlers that had allegations against them um and I I don't know if any kind of court proceedings happened from anything. I don't know um, if anything uh, was true or false. Um, yeah. no, it's not my place to say if I have no sort of um, idea about it. But you, you have people like Devlin, who I assume would probably never come back to progress, who is yeah. the current uh, Cruiserweight champion on NXT UK. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing. So he's, I mean, it's its not been said what talent might be allowed back now. Because again, him and Scotty Davis were only just suspended. It wasn't, I don't think it's come out. I don't think there's been anything since saying that they're not welcome back there anymore. I think you have to kind of assume that if, well, we'll get on to like maybe why not in, in a second because of like a, a return in face that did cause some issue recently. But you have to assume maybe maybe there's a chance he might still show up. I mean, you've, you've got to think there must have been something done to look into this. Well, you'd hope at least anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's it's weird. A lot of the, the, the wrestlers that are... Mm -hmm. it, it, a lot of them are in limbo now. And I think that's partly due to the pandemic because I feel like a lot of promotions especially smaller ones would probably take a lot of the bookings from these people um you had marty skull who uh recently appeared on new japan strong and that went down like a lead balloon and, he and then subsequently is no longer on new japan strong yep um, then Joey Ryan's been trying because there was the whole thing about him was it his company that was running that women's charity event and obviously people 
clocked him on the poster because I, I'd heard obviously the main thing that kicked off was the fact he was on a poster for a women's charity event. But then I'd heard also apparently his promotion was heavily linked into booking that event. Is that right? I believe so. I remember him tweeting recently um, that Joey Ryan is dropping a lawsuit. He's, he's filing to... Hold on, let me go. Uh, he says, I filed to dismiss the Pennsylvania lawsuit too. We're all struggling with mental health, myself included. Uh, him and I will never agree as to the events in 2013, but I could be more uh, sympathetic. I went through something similar in 2018 and understand his pain. What are you doing? Please don't throw up in my room <laughs> while, I'm, while I'm reading uh, tweets from alleged abusers. Anyway, uh, and I went through something similar in 2018 and understand his pain. Uh, and then CM Punk replied, dismiss it with prejudice if you mean what you say. Yeah, I remember reading that, yeah. So I don't know. It seems like a lot of hollow, hollow words just dragging yeah. things out. Yeah, I, I think it is going to be a situation where clearly we, we some of these names that are brought because like again, a lot of it's still under investigation as it should be. Like I, I think I think there's definitely going to be a lot of people who will come out of this cleared. Like maybe maybe there was, there was a lot of things that was clearly not true, but obviously there's a lot of them that are true, and that means that we should hopefully never see them again in the wrestling scene. But then you can't always judge on that. I, I reckon there'd be a lot of you see. I've seen a lot in documentaries. There's a lot of desperate low time promoters who would probably be more than willing to happy to put them on a card. Just because yeah. they probably would assume they could still draw a bit of money for them. I think statistically there's probably not many of them that will come out as not true. Statistically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, not again, I will say allegedly in all of it because I don't know. I yeah, have no yeah. idea and I will never know. Uh you know, if um J it just came out that Jason Jordan was cheating on his wife or something like that allegedly. Okay. I don't give a shit. I don't care if he was cheating on his wife. Yeah. If whoever he was having sex with consensu consensually, it's his business, don't care. I mm -hmm. would like him to wrestle if possible. However, when it's something that is making someone in the industry feel like they can't be in the industry or someone feeling coerced into something or someone underage who can't consent to something yeah. or, you know, whether it's physical abuse at a bar or wherever then I don't want them in a wrestling ring. Yeah. If like, if it's a consensual thing, but it's, you know, cheating, I don't care. But if it's, oh, yeah. if, well, that was, um... if it's that, I mean, one of the biggest problems is that conviction rates are so low. Yeah. One of the, bi uh, we've currently got like, you know, um, protests and vigils for Sarah Everard in, <laughs> in London and probably around the UK. Uh, it's difficult to tell because the BBC don't give a shit about, showing everyone um but you know it, it's right at the forefront where convictions are so low um and yet it happens to so many people and this disparages people from yeah maybe they will speak out about it mm -hmm. but they may not go through the struggle of going to you know the the, the london met or or anywhere like that because it is a fucking struggle friend of mine yeah. um friend of mine w was raped and and had to give her phone as evidence she lost her phone for like a year to the police because oh, they God. had to search through it or whatever um and it's just for to for to have to go through all of that and then to the end of it to for them to say something like inconclusive evidence is such a fucking hassle and yeah and and you know it's a lot of the time it's punching up because these people have have money and it's very difficult no i agree no it, it's it's a uh, the, the, the hope is with things like speaking out and me too is that it's gonna and even the recent sarah everard thing is that it's gonna hopefully bring change that much needed change to this kind of thing which is why it's like you say people for so long were so scared to ever say anything i think especially in terms of the wrestling because of the fact like they might just get blacklisted and like wouldn't have the support there when clearly they finally did. And then it's just the fact like the procedural to try and push this forward needs change into the fact like they they have the hope that something will be done. And I think the good thing about this was that it saw is that it has started to bring about change and we are sort of seeing it and hopefully it is going to continue so it is a much safer and better scene for not only 
wrestlers, but for the talent, the people involved with the production, as well as fans as well. Yeah, uh, it, it's it will come. I mean, we're we're just two fucking dudes talking about wrestling in in dingy rooms, but yeah. it will come from uh, you know background checks on on wrestling instructors. It will come from that on promoters and some kind of you know uh, things put in place to make sure that there is an accountability of some kind and a place that people can go and talk to. Um, I don't know. You, you, you probably just shouldn't get too chummy chummy with the boys in the back mm -hmm. because it will lead to things like you just, you know, being putting blinders on and not reporting things or not listening when someone tries to, or people being afraid to, because they know that you go out to a bar and when someone punches someone else, you say he's just in character yeah yeah like there's there was there was ways that this could have easily been dealt with and it was just the fact like everything built up and inevitably had to come out um kind of looping back i mean again the management really should have dealt with that situation a bit better with that fan like even if it was just a token thing of like we're sorry on behalf of jimmy we will speak to him even just offering the fan like we'll like like feel free to come to our next show at our <laughs> expense and have a t-shirt like that's at least some kind of a goodwill gesture in a, in a way. And at least, it sh like, I mean, it doesn't fix the situation, but at least it shows they're trying to like help the fan. That email just kind of shows that they really didn't show much care, and it kind of goes against the whole thing of everyone welcome in a lot of senses. And don't be a dick. Yeah, they they didn't really keep to that mantra at all times. So no. Um, so yeah, it, obviously it wouldn't take long before it was announced that management in progress would be stepping down. So Glenn Joseph announced he was leaving the promotion. Uh, so did Matthew Richards, uh, who was on, who obviously only just stepped into the role at that point. I should point out there were no allegations of against Richard. It was probably clearly a situation of that like, he was just as shocked as the rest of the world was and was a bit uh, taken aback and upset by the whole thing. John Briley, um, who announced he was stepping back as well. However, he is still technically the owner of Progress. It's just he's not going to have much of a hands-on role of it. He's just more in name alone, I guess. So it still technically is his uh, product. Um, it was announced that Michael, I'm going to probably pitch them, I think, Oku, OKU, uh, essentially the rest of the OJMO, uh, Vicky Haskins and James Amner, would be taking on more prominent roles in the company to help try and steer it in a better direction. A lot of those names I don't think are still attached anymore. I think like it was it was announced pretty quickly and then there was some more change where a lot of them just couldn't do it because of scheduling or whatever so the, they had to change into some other names associated with it. now i did try and find out just to double check but i was having trouble getting direct sources on that um however some of these people are uh, oh, i already mentioned that already again kind of said because scheduling conflicts so yeah progress particularly did not look good coming out the speaking out but then again not a lot of, like a lot of wrestling promotions didn't coming out of it i mean a lot of them had to close the doors just because of this alone and as we've seen there is still a lot of wrestlers who are not looking looked upon favorably and are still trying to get around but i think things will change and it will be a situation where anyone who did do anything particularly horrible will get the justice in due course uh fingers hope, crossed i don't hope, i don't i don't have much faith in the uh british justice system currently um i mean what do we, we we now have to protest for our right to protest so yeah that's just the, it's just a fucked up time i mean like we say though hopefully it's going to bring the change that's needed i mean I, things but things might get a lot worse before the lot get a lot better but I, I like try and remain positive that things will hopefully improve i try to be and, as I, and I don't positive remain positive so that's uh we balance each other out you know uh, yeah, you, yeah. you on your your sugar on one side of the scale, and I am just a pile of salt on the other. I'm glass half full. Your glass half empty. It's already been smashed and thrown in the bin a while ago. That glass. 